Hello, everyone. Coming up, Corey Martin and myself have our top five tips for both photos and videos in the Disney theme parks. Coming up after this. This is the Diz Unplugged, episode 728 for the week of August 5th, 2014. The Diz Unplugged is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. Experts at helping you plan the perfect Walt Disney World, Disneyland, Disney Cruise Line, and Adventures by Disney Vacations. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Well, again, welcome to the Diz Unplugged, everyone. I am your host this week, Dustin West, and I am joined at the table by my good friends, Sean Thompson, Tom Bell, Corey Martin, and back in the production nook, we have Mr. Craig Williams. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're coming to you live from the Bob Varley studio here in Orlando, Florida. And this week, myself and Corey have our top five tips for taking the best photos and videos at the Disney theme parks. Um, so the way I kind of wanted to do this is, Corey, maybe you can give your top five tips okay. for uh, photos first, and then I will do the top five tips for videos after that, and we'll kind of compare notes. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, what is I, your first? I'll go. I'll, uh, first, I want to say that this is not, we're not talking details of camera settings and f-stops and shutter speeds, yeah. anything like that, because everybody uses a different camera. Um, when they're on vacation. Also, a lot of people use smartphones. Uh, God forbid they use iPads. <laughs> but everybody's using something different, different brands. So uh, that's really going to be up to you um, to figure those things out and kind of get to know your camera. So that's, no, that's number one, prepare um, yeah. before you leave home. Get to know your camera. Read the instruction manual. Know the settings. Um, understand its limitations and what it can do. You might come here with a you know, with just a cell phone and thinking you can take all these incredible firework shots and all these things. So understand the limitations of your of your camera um, because you don't want to be dealing with this stuff in the field at Disney. You want to concentrate on having fun uh, taking photos and not going through, okay, what does this do? Even if you have presets on your camera, see what those can do. I mean, most... You know, most people might not use those. If you're more advanced, you'll start using manual settings and adjusting things yourself. But if you're just getting started, know what the presets do. Now, I can't speak for our audience, but I would have to imagine that the vast majority of people who come to the Disney theme parks in general are probably not pro photographers right. or even semi-pro photographers. They're probably novices who have a point and shoot. Maybe they have a beginner's DSLR, maybe, and they probably have a cell phone. Mm. Um, so, like you said, these tips can apply across the whole spectrum. Um, but it, it is important to note that you know if you are if you are a a, a pro photographer or a semi-pro photographer, you know maybe maybe some of these tips you know, you don't necessarily need, but I think you'll also find some interesting stuff because we have so much experience actually being in the theme parks, not just yeah. with, with cameras, but being in, in the theme parks themselves. Yeah, I'm trying to keep the tips very broad, so it, it, it pretty much it can apply to anybody, anyone, whether you're a professional or just um, you've never taken a photo before in mm -hmm. your life. Um, you know, there's a lot of resources online. I mean, say you just bought a camera, and you have no idea how to use it. I mean, there's, there are video tutorials for, for probably for that specific camera you have. I've done that. Um, the practice at home. Go, go outside in your backyard at night. Try to take some night shots. Adjust your settings. Take photos of your kids, you know, or your, your pets and all that stuff. Take photos of your dog running and see if it's yeah. blurry and see if you can really get that crisp because that's you're going to be dealing with a lot of moving things at Disney whether it's in the parades or you know a character waving at you you might have the character's face in focus but the hands mm. just a blur so i would i would definitely do that practice before you leave home and that also includes making sure you bring your chargers your batteries these are just basic you know yeah. you know basic stuff because a Disney memory card <laughs> is going to it's probably going to be cost more than your camera. It, it's a, a good point to mention if you do happen to uh get to the theme parks and you have forgotten something 
anything that you're going to need on Disney property is going to be way more expensive than what it would be at Best Buy or on Amazon or anything that you can find back at home. If you do happen to have a rental car, there are options. But if you're stuck on Disney property, first of all, it's going to be expensive and they're not going to have a very large selection of what mm-hmm. it is you might need as far as uh, photography uh, equipment is concerned. You know, a lot of times it's learn as you go with, uh, you know, a, a new camera, especially like a high-end DSLR. I mean, just knowing those settings. Mm-hmm. So, you know, try to, you're not going to perfect it before you leave, but at least you'll have an idea of what you're doing and, and how to change things really quick on the fly. Yeah. Um, the, the second tip I have is be aware of, of the light. It, it is the sun, uh, shun, uh, sunshine state, and you have to be careful of where the sun is. You don't want to be shooting into the light. You know, a lot of people, they'll just, um, you know, they, they see that castle. They want to they wanna throw their kids in front of it, the fam- take that family photo, and the sun's right behind it, and you... Um, you know, you end up just having a silhouette, a family silhouette. That uh, so make sure the light's always behind you. I mean, these, like I said, these are basic tips. And if you, if the light isn't just the way you want it, move around, change your direction. Um, I think you're going to find that you can still get that shot if you just kind of turn yourself a little bit. And if you, if it is the shot you want, and you do have a silhouette of your, you know, everybody's blacked out. This is a good time that you might want to use your flash. Yeah, um, I I try not to use a flash during it's, the daytime. It's well, yeah, kind of exactly. Odd I try not to use a flash. Period. But you know, there is an on-off switch. Yeah, well, you take- can turn your flash on and you can turn it off. It goes both ways. But for me, that's like one time where I would actually probably use it during the day to kind of fill in those those harsh shadows. On- um, and, well, if you take a look at like uh, on Main Street or at Hollywood Boulevard. Uh, you'll see the Disney PhotoPass photographers set up, and if the sun is uh, backlighting their subjects, they'll they'll use the flash as well. You know, so um, you can kind of, I don't know, if there's weird lighting and there's a PhotoPass photographer around, maybe you can go ask them, like, <laughs> what settings are you using, or what what are you doing? You know, yeah, they, they do it every day. Yeah, they do, and you I mean you can use you definitely use PhotoPass uh, people. You can definitely hand your um, hand your camera off to guest. I mean, if if you're comfortable with it, um, the the lighting is going to be best in the um, in the hours just after sunrise and just before sunset. You know that's that's when you're going to have like great great light. And you know as you get like around 12 p.m. 1 p.m. It's very bright. I mean, and yeah. it can be too bright. But you know that's usually when people are taking their their pictures anyway. But if you really want to get good good shots and have perfect lighting, it's going to be the morning. Well, evening. there's a there's a trade off with that. You know, um, if you're if you're doing it just after the sunrise or just before the sun's about to set, um, you have that the skies are beautiful, the mm-hmm. lighting is beautiful, everything looks a little more magic. That's why they call it the magic mm-hmm. hour. Um, but at the same time, the light is more directional and harsh. Yeah. So it's a good time to use that uh, tip that you just used and pay attention to which way the shadows are going, which way the light is traveling. And going back to the flash, I mean, this is I see this a lot. I can't tell you how many times I'm you know, watching fireworks, and you just see people taking photos, and you see flashes around you. <laughs> You're not going to get... A better shot if you use your flash on Main Street to try and take photos of the uh, of the fireworks. I think they're just trying to enhance the experience for other people. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's like interactive. Yeah, fireworks. thank you. And, yeah. and also in the in the dark rides. Exactly. I appreciate yeah. that. And tr- definitely try to um, avoid your flash if you can. If you can avoid it, there is an on off switch. Uh, you know, because I think a lot of people just use the uh, the automatic settings, and you know, the flash will it automatically pops up. Right. But try to change that. I think that's one of the uh, the things I would definitely work on before you leave. Try to go outside at night and try to take some shots w- without using your flash and see how they come out. And then you can possibly adjust your settings, you know, pertaining to your own camera. I don't know about a smart, like a cell phone. Yeah. It's, it's going to be pretty well, grainy. No, well, no matter who you are, um, and especially if you're the kind of person that you would rather go with your automatic settings on your camera the one manual function you should at least know how to do is to turn your flash off Mm -hmm. because that's that's the make or break Uh, even on your cell phone uh, like iPhones have that slider that turns the flash off and that's that's pretty important to understand Um, yeah even in addition to uh, just you know having a better photo it's also a rule you know no flash photography you hear that all the time um, at certain attractions so if you want to take a photo you know know how to turn your turn your flash off and don't uh especially like it i know like there are a lot of uh, like pirates 
Everybody yeah. wants to use a flash in there, and and sometimes you you might not be able to get a good shot with your with your camera if you're not using a flash. But but then you need to just accept the fact and, that, and not ruin it for everybody exactly. else because that's what ends up happening. I hate that. I really hate yeah. that. You just see this. It blinds you. It's and a then strobe. You can't see what's yeah, going on. Strobe light effect. And then the flash picture that you end up with looks nothing like. No, it looks horrible. Because that's pirates. what people. I think people expect. Oh, if I take a picture of this with the flash, it it will look like it's what I'm looking at right now. It looks and like it the work lights never have been turned does. on. Yeah, it looks awful. Yeah, yeah. And then going back to your first tip a little bit, I just wanted to say, you, you mentioned uh, looking up video tutorials and stuff. The internet has so much information. Like a lot of the stuff I've learned, um, in addition to like learning uh, tips from you and Pete. But, like, there's YouTube videos of tutorials on how to work your camera. So even if you don't know how to turn your flash off, for example, like, yeah. there's so much information. Literally, everywhere. just go onto YouTube and type in the name of your camera. Yeah. And that's a good place to start. And it'll have videos of people unboxing it, telling you what all the different mm-hmm. features of your camera are, and then people actually playing with it and getting to know the features. And mm-hmm. you'll learn along with them. Yeah, same thing with – and you can get more specific, you know, how to, how to take great pictures of fireworks. And kind of they'll walk you through – and, and kind of give you an idea of what you need to do, how, you, how, to, change, how to change your settings on your camera. And um, in addition to fireworks, um, action shots. Mm-hmm. You know, how to take great action shots. How to, um, you know, if, if your kids are running, so it's not just this blur. Mm-hmm. You know, they can kind of walk you through changing your shutter priority and you kind of work in, working with that. But, and, yeah. a lot of, and a lot of point-and-shoots come with those preset modes, you right. know, fireworks mode, sports mode, stuff like that. And lady and in a hat. <laughs> yeah. Lady in a hat. Yeah. Is that portrait mode? I don't know what it is. <laughs> what is that? Yeah. It's only for ladies in hats. Yeah. <laughs> Aretha Franklin's camera. It is, yeah, <laughs> yeah they, they, you know, a lot of cameras do have their, their, um, you know, the presets on them, so you can check out if you, if you have these little, these little icons and you don't know what this guy running means. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, check it out. Um, my third tip is don't be boring. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, it's, it's, it's vacation. You're going to do this. I mean, you, um, you know, try to, instead of constantly asking your family and friends to pose and take a picture just posing, Try to catch more candid, uh, candid moments. Uh, yeah. I have, I have some, and I'll talk more about this later. But I have some home videos of when, uh, when I was at Disney World as a kid, and my dad had just got the first um, video camera that he had. And what's up? Oh, I was talking to Craig. Oh. I was trying to get a. That's cool. Um, and. Uh, he would use he would use the video camera like a photo camera and say go stand over there and it's just a video of us standing like this yeah. looking around but yeah well it's you know you're going to have these these photos i mean you come into the magic kingdom you want to take a, a family shot and just don't make that all of your photos try to get these candid um you know expressions of 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 these real good moments i know with ferris it's like i i try to use my camera and do like these multiple bursts because his facial expression will change so many times in, in that moment, I'm just yeah. concentrating on getting that that moment with his expression, and you know, not this you know, stand here, smile, and pose. Um, the the hardest part about that, the hardest part about being candid and just kind of like sneaking shots in here and there, mm-hmm. is that if you're the camera person, you're not going to be in a lot of photos. Yeah. You know, I don't well, know and that's that well, and that's also. Um, no, it happens to me all the time. I swear, it's just the uh, it's Julie and the kids' vacation. Yeah. I'm I'm behind everything. But now, you know, with selfies being so big, don't be a, don't be afraid to take some selfies. How do you yeah. take a candid selfie? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, well, you know, try to perfect that. Yeah. You have to be Will pretend, Smith's pretend son. Pretend you don't even know the camera's there. You have to be Jaden Smith, and then that way well, you have candid selfies because he pretends way too hard to do that. Oh, Sorry. I don't know that reference. That was okay. topical. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but it, it's definitely try to get yourself in the photos. I mean, there are going to be posed photos. It, it, there's no question about it. But don't let that be all of your photos. Yeah. Try to get those. Try to get those moments. Try to find some creative um, spots around Disney. Disney is full of awesome, awesome um, areas. Like, for example, uh, Julie's, Julie's sister, uh, Taylor, she was in town, and she wanted me to take some, um, like, her senior, her senior photos. So we walked around Disney looking for, like, these cool little, cool little spots. I mean, obviously you know where that's at, but we yeah. found so many cool doors at, uh, at Disney, and she would, it's like, it's like I have a whole album, The Doors of Walt Disney World, yeah. because they, they, 
they made great photos, and it wasn't just like in front of the castle or in front of yeah. attractions. You it wouldn't was, if you didn't know that that could not be Disney, you know? Right, and that was the goal of trying to find those little creative spots. But you can still do that with your with your family photos. Try to go off the beaten path. I mean. Epcot is just full of them. You go in the back of Morocco and, you know, over at the uh, China Pavilion, there's just some cool little cool little off-the-beaten-path uh, places to find your photos. I, I prefer those shots more than the, uh, the typical, you know, stand in front of the castle where you're fighting for that one spot and everybody's yeah. there. And, and for those of you listening, maybe we'll have some of these uh, photos up on the show notes page to go along. So as you're listening, you can kind of follow along with us. Yeah, the um, my fourth tip. I don't know how if I'm going too fast. If you need me to slow down, you uh, you let me know. No, you're doing pretty good. <laughs> the um, the fourth tip is to compose your shots, uh, and that's that's very important. I think that's it's all it's a given. But compose your shots. Patience is going to be key because Disney is full of people constantly, and you know you might need to wait before that tour group moves out of your shot, and just. You know, you know, we, we we have tour groups here and it's okay to have people in your shots because it's Disney. But if they're right in your shot, just wait, just chill. Yeah. If that's the shot you want, just uh be patient. Um composing your shots. The another thing with the uh with that is turning and tilting your camera. Sometimes I overdo it. <laughs> I but I enjoy I enjoy Dutch kinda it kind of tilting that camera a little bit, giving, uh, giving it a dynamic look. You can overdo it. Don't overdo it. Don't make every single one of your shots tilted because I've done that too. But, you know, you can tilt your camera. Go vertical. Go horizontal. If you, if you really want to get, uh, you know, a dynamic look, tilt your camera. Get low. If you're taking photos of kids, get on their level. Yeah. Um, don't shoot down at them. The top of their heads. Right. <laughs> and even, you know, even certain shots – just because you're standing there doesn't mean you're in the right shot. Walk forward, walk back, squat down if you need to, to get what you need. Whether it's um, whether it's a landmark or whether it's a um, whether it's your family, it, you know, there are a lot of high things at Disney as far as a castle or like in front of um, you know Tower of Terror. To get that behind them, and you know, squat down a little bit. Don't fill your frame. Don't be afraid to. Uh, put things in the foreground if it's not people you're taking a photo of and it's just the uh a landscape don't be afraid to have that tree you know coming into the foreground kind of you know going going over whatever you're taking a shot of and also be aware of where your focal point is um every camera has an auto even even iphones have them of where you can touch and make sure what's what's in focus the you know you might have you might have that one tree in focus and everything's out of focus yeah. if that's the look you're going for cool but if it's not focus on the the what you're taking a photo of and maybe that keep that tree out of focus while we're while we're on framing and focus and stuff like this i don't know if you have this um kind of on your notes but what I see a lot in parks, and I may have mentioned this on the podcast a few times here and there, but it's worth repeating in this segment. Um, a lot of times you'll see people, like you said, who want to take a photo of a loved one and something significant in the background. Um, and what people don't seem to understand is that person can be closer to the camera. So I'll see, for example, on the bridge that goes to uh, Liberty Square, they want to get the castle in the background. So the, per- the subject of the photo will stand on one side of the bridge, and then the photographer will stand on the other side of the bridge, basically stopping all traffic on the bridge. When really you could be maybe just a couple feet mm-hmm. apart and getting that person even closer in the foreground, mm-hmm. you know, and then the castle in the background. The other thing I see is you have a tall structure, right? You have Tower of Terror or um, uh, anything uh, like on uh, Streets of New York or uh, Streets of America in um, Hollywood Studios. They'll stand by a door, but they want the whole building in it. So that they'll have the subject of the photo standing at the base of the building, and then they're all the way across the street. Well, 
the final result of that photo is going to be a big building and a little tiny ant that is like your sister. Right. Yeah. You know? and, and yeah, it's, there's a castle and, and nothing and nothing <laughs> else. And, and that's also, if you want that good, you can take that, but also zoom in too. Yeah. Get, take several, several shots of that. If you can keep everybody still, God help Ferris. If I try <laughs> to take a photo of him, he's off running. But, um, that's why everything with Ferris has to be candid. Yeah. It, it, there's just no way. There's no Ferris. I'm taking a photo of you. He's, he's he, he'll just melt down. I think I ruined him um, <laughs> as a kid. And also, you know, same thing with uh, composing your shots. Seek those um, unexpected views and angles. Head on's not always the best. I mean, you know, kind of step off to the side. Kind of, you know, you don't always have to center everything. The rule of thirds. Yeah. Um, you know, try to get those unexpected views the that head-on castle shot everybody does it first thing you do you need to do it but you know you can also walk around that castle and take some shots up and those the, i think those become more interesting like for me they do i think they um you know instead of trying to duplicate a postcard you can go buy a postcard for 10 cents if you want if you want that shot but um try not to just duplicate postcards that they sell and try to create your own um own unique images. When you're talking about composition, I know that uh, a lot of cameras, including iPhone apps, will uh, have a, a grid overlay that you can use yeah. to kind of use that to kind of help, yeah. you know, compose the shot and see what looks good and what kind of. Help you level even. your shot as well. Yeah, so that's a good a good tool to use. And I, like you were saying about the the you know shots that aren't necessarily head on, they're kind of more unique than the traditional postcard stuff. I think that's the stuff you look back on and and it. It's it's it has more of an impact. Like you look back and you see those shots and you remember. Oh, I remember taking that, or it just looks unique, and that's kind of like that signature that you took it. It's not yeah. so generic. So I, I just that's a good tip. I just wanted to take a second real quick. You had briefly mentioned it, the rule of thirds, and this is one of the most basic uh, composition um, things that you learn about photography. Basically, if you take your image, if, whether it's a rectangle or a square, or whatever, and you put a tic tac toe board on it. So you have two lines going down, two lines going across. The four points where those lines intersect, according to the rule of thirds, is where you should have your action. So in any one of those four points is where your subject or your action should be taking place, and that makes for good composition, according to the rule of thirds. Just wanted to I mean, it, there were some that. times where, you know, having a symmetrical, um, I think we just had a photo up, that I was trying to center it. I wanted it to be symmetrical and not, um, you know, but there are some times where you just need to do that. But, you know, it, it, really, yeah. it really depends. But, yeah. The, um, the, last, the last one, number five, is don't forget about the details. Um, we talk about everything is so big and so grand that, you know, if you get, if you get closer, I think one of the best examples really is, um, you know, with food. People love taking pictures of food. Um, I know during our seven and sevens, we spending the entire day and night there at these resorts. We there were so many little details um, around Disney, and don't don't pass those up. Look look for those little details. Those are fun to shoot. Right. Well, your your inclination coming into the park is, oh God, the castle. Let me get the castle, and so you move along saying, let me get all of Space Mountain. When going in and getting like the sign of Space Mountain could be even more interesting, right? You know, yeah, the, and use the you know use the text and the signage around the park. I think that it, it makes for a more interesting shot, and you know you remember it because it's like, where is this? Is this Disney? Where am I? The um, definitely the the details and like, like going back to the food. That look, everybody loves taking pictures of food. I mean, I can't tell you how many times you can. You know, I, I don't think it ever gets old taking a picture of a Mickey waffle, you know, or somebody eating a Dole Whip or something. Th these things, um, those are part of the details, though, of your vacation. I mean, granted, you're just eating, but it's fun. It, it's fun to take pictures of food, especially when it looks beautiful. But also don't forget the to establish your shot. That way, if you look at this maybe three or four years ago, you'll say, okay, I was here. I was at yeah. Chef Mickey's, and that, that's where I, that's where the Mickey waffle was. The um, I love I love shooting the details and I know Sean you had you were doing a series of blogs for our seven seven and that's all you were focusing on mm -hmm. were the details of the resorts and those those were some incredible shots that you you're looking for the details I typically focus on that because for me I think a lot of times 
those little details are what kind of makes up the big experience. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the different kind of like furnishings that they put in the resort or the different kind of like architectural details that you find all over, that kind of stuff really adds up to make like a complete rounded out experience. So I like to focus on that stuff. Yeah. And, you know, in this same, in this same um, idea of, of the details, you know, capture the details, but don't get so consumed with it that you, you know, if you're all your vacation photos are just a bunch of details, you, you miss the big picture. Um, don't try to get too consumed in it, but don't forget about them. So there, there's this there's this balance that you have to do really is to to walk where it's just not, yeah. you know, a whole photo album of close ups. Well, because you overdo it, and then you have yeah, no yeah. context to what <laughs> yeah. anything is. It's yeah. Just, yeah, you can overdo anything. Like of I was course. telling you, like when when I you know would tilt the camera to get that angle, I was like, okay, now I always have to tilt my camera. Slow down, Corey. <laughs> Here's Slow my down. photo album uh, yeah. trash can signs. Yeah. <laughs> but those are pretty much uh, num the, the, my five tips for taking photos. I mean, hopefully, you know, you can you know use these. And um, again, like we didn't talk about settings because everybody's situation is different. But you know, the, the web is full of great great um, resources. The DIS boards, we have a photography board. I mean, you can go in there and ask, ask away because everybody is pretty much in the same boat um, as you. They are all going to take photos at Disney or they've just got back from Disney and everybody's there to help and share their tips. Cool. Cool. Well, thank you, Corey. Those are good good five tips for your uh, best photos at Disney World. And actually, you got, have a little crossover with my uh, oh, I'm sure. best yeah. five for, for video, though you know, video is a completely different animal, you know, at its at its uh, at its heart from photography because it does have the capability to tell more of a story, tell uh, convey more emotion, and um, you know, for me, it it meant a lot to me looking back at my uh, vacation videos that I would have as a kid that my dad or my brother or I would film and and they all told a story and um, even though it was probably only interesting to me and my family you know it wouldn't really tell a story to anybody else but that's the that's the cool thing about video is that there's there's movement and there's the ability to tell a story so so my tips uh, about the best uh, video tips is is still along the lines of what you're doing um, you know, very practical things that you can use to get better video while in the theme parks, but also from the standpoint of how do you make a very memorable uh, vacation, you know, on 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 film or on digital video. Um, so my first uh, my first tip for better video in the theme parks is <laughs> play with your manual settings and get to know your camera. Um, mine's a, a little bit different though, and I and I want to go into a little bit more detail. Um, first of all, you know there are so many devices that can record video, including your phones, point and shoot cameras, camcorders, prosumer camcorders, and even DSLR cameras. And that's and that's one of the things I wanted to mention is that if you do have a DSLR camera and you haven't played around with its video functions, and you are thinking about um, getting some video in the theme parks while you're on vacation, definitely take a look at your DSLR camera and see what that has to offer because um, among all those things that I just listed, DSLR cameras have the best, typically have the best image sensors and the best lenses. So you can get some really nice looking stuff with a piece of equipment you might have already had. Um, and even if you're thinking about shopping, you can find um, some really good DSLRs uh, for reasonable prices. Um, the other thing I want to talk about in getting to know your camera and the manual settings is some of just the basic settings, not telling you what's good for what, but just some of the basic settings, especially with video, that you want to know. And those are, uh, you know, your focus, obviously. Um, you want to know what's in focus, what's out of focus. Uh, your brightness or your exposure, how much light is coming into the camera. Is it too dark? Is it too light and um, and then of course you could get into shutter speed and, and stuff like that for different effects um, but then the other one is uh, color balance um, typically you know I think a lot of people would probably have their color balance just on the automatic setting but you can kind of play around with those and those are the more basic settings the more general 
uh, overview of, of of settings, and then you can get into the details a little bit more as you um, as you delve into your camera. Um, but it's it's really important to know your camera before you leave. The other thing I think you should know before you you head out on vacation and knowing that you want to get some video um, is, is kind of have an idea of what kind of video you want to do. I, I'm not saying you need to go in with a plan to like, I'm going to make a movie while I'm on vacation, but know basically what kind of stuff you want in your video. Do I want you know, a lot of shots of my family in it, or do I want to focus more on the rides? Um, figure out what kind of shots, you know, that you definitely want to have, and then th- kind of be thinking about how you would want to string those all together if you were to, you know, put something together at the end of the day when you're done shooting everything. So just have a basic idea of what you know you want to shoot when you're there. Um, <laughs> my second tip would be pay attention to light. <laughs> yeah, that's funny, yeah. But in this case, I think uh, lighting plays in a lot differently with video than photo because a camera can move and you you can play with the light a right, little more. Yeah. You can you can go from behind a person to in front of a person, and the light is more dynamic in video. Uh, photo, it's just one image. Here's what the light was like in that moment. Unless you really want to use the light in a photo the way you want it. If you yeah. want that that sunset going through the trees or something yeah, like that, exactly. you really have to you really have to know what you want with the light before. Yeah. So I have you know I have the same the same basic tips is you know make sure the sun is behind you. Make sure you know you're not pointing directly at your light source. Um, but if you want to play around with that a little bit, if you want to get creative, video gives you that kind of uh, – it's, it's very lenient in that it gives you the ability to, to play with your environment and play with the light. Um, let's see. Um, the, the other thing I have uh, for lighting is obviously know, know your brightness as far as like – uh, low light situations are concerned. Some cameras are going to be better at this than others, mm-hmm. especially when video is concerned. Um, so, let's say again, prime example going on Pirates of the Caribbean. You know, you have a couple options. Um, DSLRs and certain lenses will be able to pick up the low light a little bit better than maybe just your run of the mill camcorder. Um, prosumer camcorders tend to be better in low light situations, but I think you do need to go into filming low light situations um, with some sort of uh, idea of how your camera does in low light. And like Corey said, go outside and maybe practice, shoot a lantern or something you have out in the back and see if it is grainy or if it comes out uh, looking good. Um, but definitely, definitely no what you have as far as low light capabilities in your camera and just be aware of it. Um, there's a million different things you can do to play with that. Certain cameras offer, you know, the lens is really good, or maybe it has built in gain increase. You will, uh, you will have a little bit more noise in your image, but the camera can still pick up, you know, the, the darkness. And some cameras even have night vision, which I don't know that I would want to film pirates of the Caribbean and night vision. That would be, kind of weird and soulless it would be like one of those ghost shows yeah. where you just see the eyeballs like their irises are just bright green uh, very pa- no never mind. yeah but it, it's, <laughs> <I'm not gonna laughs> as far as lighting concern a low light especially in the disney parks fireworks and dark rides is is a huge thing to consider but for the most part the lighting in florida is really good and the the daylight and the sunsets and the sunrises are beautiful and there's another thing to consider in Florida, when our uh, storms roll in, or even if it's not raining or lightning, we have some of the coolest cloud formations in Florida that I've ever seen, which create some really unique lighting situations during the day. But, you know, along those lines, and I, um, I probably should have mentioned this too, is that you know, with, as far as photos are concerned, after it rains and the uh, you know the grounds real wet. Those can make for some awesome, awesome photos because it's yeah. just glowing. Yeah, everything kind of has a shimmer to yeah. it. Yeah, and sometimes yeah. you can even catch like a cool reflection yeah. in the in, in the puddles on the ground if you're doing like a really lit subject, and then it it looks yeah. really nice. And you can definitely take yeah. advantage of the bad weather, whether it's photo or yeah. video. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and uh, my next tip is framing. 
which I think you kind of hit yeah, on there yeah. as well. Um, but again, all of these things are slightly different with video because when you make a shot uh, in video, you can start in one place and end in another. Your framing can change all in one shot. So don't be afraid to to do some pans or uh, stuff stuff like that. Um, you know, be creative and be explore a little bit and and try to just stick to what looks good to you. You don't have to impress everybody. You don't have to impress us here at the table. You don't have to impress your friends and family that you're showing it off to. What looks good to you? And go with that as far as framing is concerned. Are you going to touch on um, iPhones at all in this? Because I have uh, a little pet peeve with people videoing with their iPhones. I know exactly what your pet it's, peeve it's is. It's vertical video syndrome. Yeah. 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 I my, actually Google. It's I, I took that from a YouTube video, so I can't I can't take credit for video ver, vertical video syndrome. Uh, look, look look for it on uh, YouTube. It's hilarious. But uh, along the lines of framing, because when you have your video camera, you can't just yeah. rotate to vertical. So you shouldn't do it with a phone either. It's f- for a hundred years, <laughs> film and video has been horizontal. Let's keep it that way. <laughs> That's all I have to say on that. Just. Yeah. yeah. If you're still talking about framing, I, there's a pretty common thread that's going through chat uh, this whole time about video mm-hmm. is that uh, a lot of people in chat are saying they've, they film things and then when they get home to watch it, they get sick from watching it because okay. it's nauseating. So okay. I don't know if you plan on talking about that a little later, but I do. If it's, I think it's an interesting point because I understand you know, sometimes we get carried away. If you're not <laughs> used to filming things, it's easy to go overboard too fast. Very Blair shaky. Witch. Yeah. yeah, I made the mistake of the first time I ever came down to Walt Disney World by myself. I bought a new camera and I was going to make like the coolest, you know, home video ever. I just I went with my brother and some other friends and I made the mistake of literally having the camera on the entire time and walking with it. And I showed it to myself. I showed it to my friends and nobody could watch it. Take a moment to just stop. And if you want to get a still shot, get a still shot. If you want to do a nice gentle pan or something like that, that's going to come across a lot less nauseating. Even if even if you're a little shaky with your hands, it's going to come a lot uh, become a lot less nauseating than constantly walking around and whipping yeah. the camera around. Right. Um, which brings me to my fourth point, which is find some sort of stabilization. Um, if you want to bring maybe a lightweight small tripod with you or a monopod um, or find maybe a a pistol grip or some sort of grip for your camera that gives you that your hands aren't right on the camera they're uh, attached to something that's on the camera and it adds a little stabilization Um, we actually have a couple suggestions for grips and tripods and stuff that I'm going to put in the show notes page Um, there's a uh, yeah, a couple different brands. Manfrotto tripods and monopods mm-hmm. are really good. They're on, they're on the more prosumer end, so they're going to be a little more expensive. But uh, basically, any photo or any video is going to be better quality if it's on a tripod, um, as far as the way it looks uh, and and its stabilization, especially night shots and stuff like that. Yeah. I, you know, like we we go to these parties. Uh, Mickey's not so scary and very merry. I have to have a tripod that night. There's yeah. just there's just no way around it. If I don't, I find trash cans. I can get very creative with, you know, finding a spot to, to stable the camera. And even if it's not level, right then and there in the field, you can do it when you get home for a photo, yeah. but not with a video. Yeah, yeah. you're kind of stuck with the... Yeah, there are tools where you can, you know, if you want to get into the more post-production route of yeah. video, you can level things out. But I know for me, uh, beyond stabilization, uh, and this is kind of like a mini sub point, uh, the benefit of having a tripod for doing fireworks, parades, shows, and anything like that is that you don't have to be looking through the lens the entire time. You can actually experience um, what you're there to see. And you can just hit record on that. Uh, it's on the tripod. It's framed up nice. And you just glance every now and then, make sure you know mm-hmm. everything's getting in the shot and it's still recording. Um, but you know, tripods help you experience those shows yeah. a little bit better you know that's a general tip for most people for me my mind is still on the camera and like i can't enjoy the show it's yeah. like everything that's going on in the camera is in my mind i try my best but 
that's just the, the way tripod's my brain definitely works. useful, but you might regret it eight hours in after walking around the park with a tripod. Yeah, <sighs> depending on if you already have a backpack, depending on <laughs> yeah. how lightweight it is, yeah. you know, and maybe know. a monopod's a better you know suggestion. But these are just things that are going to help you have a more stable have a more stable shot, um, and it, it's it's going to look better, and it's not going to be like you said nauseating mm-hmm. in the long run. Um, my just, uh, while we're talking about tripods, I yeah. just want to point out that. If, even if you are using an iPhone or, or a smartphone, they do make pretty cool uh, tripods for mm-hmm. smartphones. Yeah, uh, GorillaPod is one one brand name that I know, and they're kind of like stretchy, uh, posable right. type yeah. tripods, and you can even hook them onto like a railing or something. Right. They're great. They Those also work really well. they also just make tripod mounts for sure. um, yeah. iPhones. I'll try to see if I can get that in the show notes as well. Uh, an example of that. But they're usually fairly cheap, and if, if you're just sticking with a, a smartphone, mm-hmm. it's really easy to carry that in your backpack. I, I also want to point out that. You know, I didn't want to talk too much about phones, and and I don't know that my first recommendation would be to use like an iPhone or a cell phone to record all your video, um, but it is possible. And this brings me to my next point, which is do a little bit of post production. Um, my main concern for people who are just just kind of dabbling in, in doing some video of their family vacation is that that video is just going to sit on whatever device it was recorded on and never be seen again. Welcome to my computer. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many videos that just, they're just sitting there. Yeah. So the idea being that you can take all of these videos, you know, capture all these videos, however it is you caption it, uh, capture it, iPhoto or uh, whatever kind of um or, or, or Premiere or something like that. Bring all those video clips into your computer and just stitch them together. You don't have to be a, an editor. Just bring them together. And and I actually have some um, some recommendations. You know, uh, for the iPhone, iMovie is already built in, so you don't even have to capture. Or it's not built in. You can uh, go and, and download it from the app, uh, the app store. And it's a really easy way to just drag clips together and render it out as one whole video. Um, and obviously on Macs, uh, Mac computers, uh, iMovie comes pretty standard, uh, along with uh, Windows Movie Maker on PC. And then uh, for Android, there's a whole bunch of different options. One of the most popular is uh, Magisto, which uh, is a really easy-to-use uh, editing tool. The whole point being bring those clips together and make a final, some sort of final product. I could go into a million different post-production tips Mm -hmm. on how to clean up your video here or edit things together here, add music there. You know, you can do like Sean said and and find some tutorials online that'll teach you how to do it. My main concern is that, you know, I want people to maybe have, just have some sort of final project, uh, product, have some sort of final product where you've brought it all together and now you can show it to yourself, you can show it to your friends and family. I think the same thing applies to still photos. Mm -hmm. You know, now in the age of digital, they're sitting on your camera, or sitting on your computer, yeah. rather than Printing. going to the photo mat and developing them and having them. So do something with them. Make a photo book, make an album or something. Yeah. Upload them to Facebook. Well, that's, what that's I was pretty say. much yeah. what I do. Uh, that's <laughs> a good a good argument against that problem is is probably. Uh, you doing something with the photos and video on your phone. It's so easy to share that stuff to like yeah. social media networks, whether it's Vine, Instagram, um, and that's fairly easy to do some production work on afterwards or even before. You know, they have the filters yeah. you could take a photo with, yeah. um, and that immediately goes somewhere, and that immediately gets shown to to your family, your friends, and stuff like that. So if if you are worried about having, you know, that kind of well, problem of, of stuff sitting on your computer for years after and you don't yeah. really do anything with it. It's cool to kind of have that instant gratification yeah. of doing that. Facebook is definitely the more organized of the bunch in mm-hmm. that, you know, you can make specific albums to, you know, have, you know, summer vacation, 06, yeah. whatever, and, and throw it in there. Yeah. <laughs> um, video is a little different in that I, I know I see a lot of people who just take like a one minute video and say, okay, we're outside of such and such and here it is and they put it up onto Facebook and that's fine. That's fun. My suggestion would be, you know, once you're done doing that, bring that in with all the other video clips you mm-hmm. did and put them together and see what you get. You know, it doesn't have to be fancy. Just try and maybe have a final product. You know, there's a lot at Disney. I think this probably goes back into the framing of stuff and stabilization. There's a lot at Disney that um, is pretty much doing the work for you. Kind of like the idea of a park bench. 
there's no zooming or panning. It's just a camera recording and just kind of soaking up the sights and sounds of Disney. And I think with video, you you can do that. You don't really have to go walking unless you're doing something creative. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably one of the least uh, creative things that I could do with uh, with video. Is just okay. I'm just going to record, <laughs> set it, and you know, time it. You know, yeah. but it's. Uh, but video, there's a lot going on at Disney that you don't really have to do a you know ton of stuff unless you're doing something creative. Yeah. Um, you want those cool effects, and but that's beyond me. <laughs> yeah. Well, the last thing I want to end on is just kind of the same uh, chord I opened this with, which is this is all about making memories. It's it, while it is fun to you know learn new things about your cameras and try and you know uh, become better at, at with those skills. I said it in, in one of my tips, shoot what you like, you know, shoot what looks good to you and what you think is going to help you make a really memorable vacation photo or video. And, and that's, what's most important. And I think that's what I, you know, want to get out to everybody is this is, it's all about making memories and it's about trying to make those memories a little more high quality. It's know? doing that. And you know, it's also, you know, I, I do this a lot. I experience my entire time through the viewfinder. Yeah. And trying to have that, create those memories and find that happy balance between really experiencing the uh, your time there with your family and friends and not doing everything through the viewfinder. And so y you do have to have that balance because you might leave and you're just re you know experiencing your trip for the first time going through your photos or yeah. your video. <laughs> like, oh, God, I wish yeah. I wouldn't have missed that. Yeah. Um, I got it, but I, you know. I'm just now experiencing it. Yeah. I do that a lot. I mean, I, I get home like, crap, I should have you know. <laughs> should have been paying yeah. attention. Okay. Well, I want to thank you guys for being here and uh, helping us out with this segment. I want to thank you guys at home for listening. We hope you enjoyed it. And that is going to do it for our episode of The Diz Unplugged. We hope you liked it, and we will see you next time. Thank you, everybody. 